Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Bethany Beggenhow. And I'm Valerie Ruiz. Here's your news now. Cabrini College's green team is asking the campus community to donate winter coats, gloves, scarves, boots, and other warm clothing that is recyclable and that can be used for a good cause. Donation boxes will be all over campus. Be sure to find the one nearest to you. All donations will be collected on December 12th. Proceeds will be given to Catholic Social Services and Chalk. Chalk, more formally known as Community Homeless Outreach Center, is a daytime outreach center for thousands of people who are experiencing homelessness. Fellow Cabrini students go to Chalk for volunteer opportunities where they work alongside Chalk residents to help them learn and improve the community. Ready to jump into the holiday season? The Macy's Christmas Light Show in Center City will be running for an entire month. Enjoy snowflakes, ballerinas, and reindeer that float on top of the four-story high velvet curtain at the historic Macy's Grand Court Atrium. The light show includes over 100,000 bright LED lights that create holiday images. Music from the Wanamaker Grand Oregon accompanies the light show. But hold on to your tinsel, the Dickens Village is back in action. Be sure to get some holiday shopping done as well. For more information on times, visit the light show's website at wanamakeroregon.com. Here's just another way to catch the holiday spirit. On Sunday, December 9th in Philadelphia, the Punk Rock Flea Market will be hosting a holiday edition of Gifts to Buy on 9th Street. Hundreds of vendors will be selling everything from records to snowboarding gear and even food. The flea market is a great place to find amazing deals for the holiday season, and you may even find something for yourself. Admission is $3. For more information, for more information visit campusphilly.org. Let's go to Sheena to see what students and faculty are planning for the holidays and what they find most stressful. We're just here at Cabrini College asking staff and faculty and students what they'll be doing for the holidays and what do they find stressful. Um, I'm spending the holidays with my fiance's family in Downingtown. Um, I think the most stressful thing about the holidays is my family's seven and a half hours away, so trying to see them during the time while also spending time with my fiance's family. I plan to go home to see my family and my mother and my father. Um, um, also, I might be going to to Georgia, I believe, to see my grandfather and his new wife. Um, they have a house out there and they want us to all come spend um, Christmas with them. So we'll see what happens, but that's mainly about it. The most stressful for me is is shopping because as someone who works in retail, having to deal with a lot of customers and having to actually be one of the customers is the stressful part because people are just, you know, very, um, I guess you could say, agitated with everyone. So the most stressful part is shopping. Oh, and decorating. My husband is the cook for Thanksgiving and he's going to do a goose. Now, goose is probably my favorite of the various poultry items. I mean, turkey, a turkey's all right. But a goose is where it's at, because I like dark meat, and a goose is all dark meat. So that'll be nice. I'll go home and work for about two weeks, and then I'm going to take a road trip. Well, it seems as though everywhere has it all planned out and ready for the holidays. This is Sheena Sutton, on location for a location. Back to the studio. That was your trip around the block. Now here's Rob for this week's sports update. The Cavalier basketball teams marched to the University of Scranton on Tuesday looking for wins. However, both teams came up short. The women's team lost 57-53 with junior guard Brittany Sandon leading the squad with 19 points. The men's team lost in dramatic fashion, falling 74-73 in overtime with freshman Aaron Goodman leading the Cavs with 26 points. Goodman was one of five Cavs who finished the night in double figures. In Philly sports, the Eagles fell to 3-8 following Monday night's 30-22 loss to the dismal Carolina Panthers. The loss all but assures the end of the Andy Reid era, as owner Jeffrey Lurie said earlier this season that another 8-8 record will not be good enough for Reid to retain his job. The best the Birds can do at this point is 8-8, and they would have to win out in order to do so. Their next game will be a rematch of Week 10 against Dallas, but in Dallas's barn this time. Let's hope they can put an end to this seven-game skid. The Sixers improved to 9-6 following Tuesday night's exciting 100-98 win over the Dallas Mavericks. The win marked Elton Brand's return to the Farg after being released by the Sixers over the summer. Evan Turner led the team in scoring with 22 points. The NHL may still be locked out, but that did not stop close to 11,000 fans from attending the Operation Hattrick charity hockey game last Saturday in Atlantic City. Scott Hartnell of the Flyers and Brad Richards of the New York Rangers put aside their bitter on-ice rivalry to organize an exhibition game of different stars from their respective teams and around the league. Team Richards won 10-6 following a four-goal performance from James Neal and 57 saves from goalie Henrik Lundqvist. Proceeds from the game went to benefit the New Jersey Relief Fund as well as the Empire State Relief Fund. Phillies catcher Carlos Ruiz has been suspended for 25 games of the 2013 season 
after testing positive for amphetamines. Ruiz has become the latest in a string of professional athletes to be suspended for use of Adderall. This week's location athlete of the week goes to Aaron Goodman of the men's basketball team. In five games, the freshman recorded four double-doubles, and his average of 18.4 points per game leads the team. That's all I got for this week in sports. Be sure to tune in next week for another Cavalier Adelphia sports update. Now over to Val for your trip around the nation. Thousands of Thanksgiving meals were distributed to those affected by Superstorm Sandy at 30 sites in New York City. Two weeks ago, only 25% of the city's gas stations were operating. That has now increased to 85%. Over 2.7 million families have been given bottles of water, blankets, and other supplies to help them get through this devastating disaster. The storm recovery is far from complete. In New Jersey, Sandy caused over $29 billion in damages, one of the hardest states hit. According to New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, he wants to work with the Obama administration to get the funding needed to support New Jersey. Black Friday approached rather quickly but left without a bang. Crowds grew on Black Friday, but sales remained the question. There were more people shopping in the U.S. than last year, according to CNN. Retailers questioned whether starting holiday shopping on Thanksgiving evening was really the greatest idea. Foot traffic on Black Friday may have increased, but much of the shopping was done on Thanksgiving or online. There may be more hours to shop because Thanksgiving fell earlier than usual this year, but people probably have less money to spend, according to Jay Henderson, Strategy Director for Smarter Commerce. With no Powerball lottery winner, the jackpot increases to a record $500 million, making this the second largest amount in the game's history. The prize started at $325 million, but no one had the lucky numbers of 22, 32, 37, 44, and 50, with the Powerball being 34 this past weekend. The odds of matching six winning Powerball numbers are 1 in 175 million. The next drawing will take place later this week. That was your news from across the nation. Now here's Megan with your weekly entertainment update. Twitter is a part of everyone's daily life, especially for newborn baby hashtag Jameson. Yes, that's right, Mommy Jameson has named her new baby girl hashtag. AwkwardMessages.com posted a photo of baby hashtag with mom's name hidden. Putting spelling errors aside, I have just a couple questions for Mama Jameson. Will the baby's nickname be hash or tag? And if she loves Twitter so much, why did she post this announcement on Facebook? Let us know what you think of baby hashtag's name at Location News. Wedding bells could be ringing soon for Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. The couple announced their engagement in April after seven years of dating. Pitt said Monday evening that they could exchange vows soon. Aside from wedding planning, Pitt and Jolie have been busy with new projects such as World War Z and Malficient. That was your weekly entertainment update. Now let's go to Bethany for your trip around the world. In Jerusalem, farmers were trying to reach their land near the Israeli-Gaza border when soldiers opened fire. According to Israeli Defense Forces, the people were actually rioters who were trying to break the fence dividing Israel and Gaza. This has been the first shooting since Hamas and Israel agreed on a ceasefire after eight days of warfare. The ceasefire agreement's next step will be to negotiate opening the borders around Gaza, letting people and goods to come through the fence. It's winter inside and outside for Syrian refugees living in Lebanon. Thousands of Syrians were, that were affected by the war find themselves in no more than flip-flops and t-shirts huddled together in an abandoned elementary school. According to the United Nations, temperatures dropped to zero overnight and more than a million people are still in need but are not receiving help from international relief efforts. With over 100,000 Syrian refugees living in Lebanon, the government labeled this as a serious humanitarian issue. At the Vatican City at Sunday Mass, Pope Benedict XVI told his six new cardinals to resist the temptation of power, but to follow in the footsteps of Jesus, by focusing their work on spreading the Christian faith and spreading the truth of God's love. The six new cardinals come from Colombia, India, Lebanon, Nigeria, the Philippines, and the U.S., a wide geographic mix that will help elect Benedict's successor. Location got to sit down with Sister Christine Marie Baltas for this week's Person of the Week. Let's check in with Alex to hear more. When you first began your time here as a student at Cabrini College in 1959, the campus was so different. Can you explain to me how the college has evolved over the years? The college has grown in so many ways, uh, bringing men on campus in around 1972, uh, making it a co-ed institution, uh, through offering many uh, other majors, uh, communications and business and marketing. Well, part of being a sister is to be 
being a missionary sister anyway, is to be able to go on mission. Uh, and since my background was education, uh, I started out as a teacher, taught for many years in the elementary level and, and mostly in junior high level. And then I taught in all three of our high schools, one in New York, one in New Orleans, one in California. So the opportunity to not only teach in a, a different place, in a different state, but also to experience great differences, cultural differences, where I lived. So you live in this beautiful cottage at the end of the driveway of Cabrini. Students are really curious about what it's like to live there. Can you explain it to me? It's wonderful. Uh, it's, uh, it's a nice, cozy, secure house. I feel so comfortable here. And, uh, it's very, very peaceful living here. I enjoy when I can have friends come in. I have a nice guest room that I can offer to friends who want to stay over. Um, it's just wonderful, and I feel very safe and secure. Several people have said, aren't you afraid to be down there alone? And my answer is no. <laughs> I know that if I were to ever be frightened, I'd just pick up the phone and security would be right down here, and they know I'm here. And so no, I'm very, very much at peace living here. I couldn't ask for anything more. <laughs> Thanks for catching up with us this week. For Location Weekly News, I'm Valerie Ruiz. And I'm Bethany Bigginhill. Enjoy the rest of your week, Cabrini. <laughs>